Last year, Google celebrated its 25th birthday. CEO Sundar Pichai wrote a letter to his employees. The tone was optimistic. The tech giant was 25 years old. It could go on for another 25. And for the journey ahead, there's one idea or motive that came up repeatedly. Artificial intelligence. Sundar Pichai mentioned AI more than 20 times in his letter, so the message was quite clear. Google won't, won't lose the AI race. But will it win the AI war? We ask because it is a war now. Yesterday we told you about OpenAI. They've launched their new AI model. It's called GPT-40. It can do a whole lot of things. Solve maths equations. Talk to your pets and even flirt with you. It created a lot of buzz. And it set the bar high for its competitors. Now barely 24 hours later, Google has shown its wares at its annual developer conference. Usually, it's one of those things that make you snooze, but this one was different. Imagine rainbow-colored robes and the mention of AI at least 121 times. It's what Silicon Valley calls a party. A lot of announcements were made there, almost too many to keep track of, but here's a quick rundown. The first was about Google Search. It's the big headliner. The search is how this company started. It's what made Google what it is, the Google Search. If you want to know something, you Google it. You need any answer, you hop onto Google. Google has become synonymous with search, but now they want to change it. They want to overhaul the search engine by using artificial intelligence. Last year, Google called AI the future of search. Now they're rolling out that future. It's called the AI overview. And what does it do? Right now, when you search for something on Google, you get tons of results and you sift through them. You click on some links, you read through a few of them, you discard the ir irrelevant links. And this is how you put together the information that you need. This is how you search on Google. The new search engine will change all of it. It will make the process easier. You look for something and Google's AI model will go through the results. It will make a summary of the relevant stuff for you. And that summary will appear on top of the search results. Basically, it, it will give you a gist of the answer that you're looking for plus links to more information in case you need it. And you don't even have to type what you're searching for. You can record a video, you can take a picture, or just speak. The AI model will figure out what you're asking for. Of course, there's a catch. Not every search needs AI. I'll give an example. Imagine looking for firstpost.com. It's a pretty straightforward search. You type firstpost.com and it takes you to the web page. You don't need AI for that. And that's where Google is trying to strike a balance. Not every answer will have a review. Regardless, your Google search is getting an AI twist. Will it change the way we search? Most certainly. But will it be better? Well, we don't know that. The second offering is Vio. It's Google's video generation tool. It can create videos based on prompts, much like OpenAI Sora. The third is a new AI model. It's called Gemini 1.5 Flash. It's as powerful as the old one, but also faster. Fourth on the list is smarter Android devices. They'll be able to detect scam calls, offer you information, ingest PDFs, basically do the whole deal. And then they announced their new project called Astra. It's a multimodal AI assistant. If you think you've heard of this before, you're not wrong. OpenAI just released a similar model a multimodal AI assistant. But the Google one is a bit different. You switch on your camera, you let it scan the room, and then you ask the AI model questions. It's like a virtual assistant. It can even tell you where you kept your glasses. What does that part of the code do? This code defines encryption and decryption functions. It seems to use AESCBC encryption to encode and decode data based on a key and an initialization vector, IV. Hmm. That's right. What neighborhood do you think I'm in? This appears to be the King's Cross area of London. It is known for its railway station and transportation connections. Do you remember where you saw my glasses? Yes, I do. 
Your glasses were on the desk near a red apple. <laughs> Sounds like quite a useful feature. I know people who could use it. But jokes aside, this is a very exciting phase. Technology is changing rapidly. It is transforming our lives. And it will be messy. Two years ago, all of this sounded like science fiction. Today, it's a reality. In two days, we've had two major AI launches, personal assistance, video tools, an AI-powered search engine, all of it for free. And that should put us on our guard, because when big tech offers something for free, it is extracting a hidden price from us. And it's all happening so fast and in such an unregulated space that it will be a while before we fathom it. First Post reports from the world's second largest continent. Hello, I'm Alison LaGrange. A very warm welcome from Durban, South Africa. We get you the news and the newsmakers from Africa. South Africa goes to the polls on the 29th of May. I will track the election and bring you ground reports. Is it the end of the road for the African National Congress? And will former President Jacob Zuma stage a dramatic comeback? From elections, to climate change, to innovations and opportunities. As the world's attention shifts, we report from Africa, the heart of the Global South. Join me every weekday live on First Post.